mission to really start? Should it be another three minutes? It's 4.04 now. Hmm? We should start? Then why don't you guys just come in the front? Those move, move it, make it. I think most of you have confessed that I'm a cultural ignoramus. Art, art and dance and music and things like this, I just can appreciate like a folk guy, like a rustic rural guy. I have, I'm not schooled in any of them, uh, but I really, really admire. And I actually go back uh, some, some bit in time. It was, I think, somewhere in the 80s, I forget, or it was uh, mid-80s or late 80s, where I was reading India Today, a magazine. Obviously, there was no smartphone, so you got to read most of the stuff in magazines. And typically, you'd read them in a barber shop or uh, in a circulating library because it was too expensive to buy. Then I read about a guy called Asta Debu. I never knew in my life I'm going to meet him in the flesh, and there he is. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> so to that extent, actually, I'm really, I've pinched myself to say that I'm seeing this man, a legend. I've never gone and watched him perform. Actually, I've never entered into um, any place of performing arts. I went to once in New York to a play called Cats, and I slept right through it. I was almost thrown out of it. Uh, but today I'm really excited because we're going to get a glimpse of a man who's a legend. A man who from the age of six has dedicated his life to dance. Even very few engineers sitting here dedicate your entire life to engineering. That's a big thing, right? So one more round of applause. <laughs> there are a few things I don't want to forget to read. Usually I don't mind if I skip the introduction, but there are a few things that I will read because I found this so fascinating. Throughout his long and illustrious career, he has worked with various prominent performers such as Pina Bosch, if I'm pronouncing that wrongly, excuse me, Alison Becker Chase, and more importantly, Pink Floyd. <laughs> Even this morning, I was listening to Wish You Were Here when I came. Uh, and there he is, Wish You Were Here. And in many parts of the world. The other thing is, Astad is also someone who's mastered Kathak and Kathakli and also brought to India the definition of contemporary dance. Probably he's one of the pioneers or the first, and he will tell you about it himself as to how he did this. Briefly, when I was talking to him, there were glimpses of a struggle, but there was also glimpses of no frustration at all, which is something that I have seen in all leaders. Nobody says their past was difficult or whatever it is. Uh, Astad has been conferred with the prestigious Sangeeta Natak Academy Award and the Padma Shri. He's one of the pioneers of contemporary dance, and I think today marks your 40th year? As a professional. Professional 40 years of dancing. So with another round of applause, let's welcome. 40 years in India, 50 years. 50, guys. That makes me feel a little young, right? Over to you. Are you recording or it's fine? You can wire it. Uh, we'll give you a wireless mic. No, I don't need to I'm going to be dancing. You? You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, fine. You want to come up front? Come come because sitting in the back. Come come because maybe we need he wants to play? Uh, I think it's, it's, yeah, just wire him up. For audio, right? Okay. Thank you. So thank you first of all, for considering my work and inviting me to address you all this afternoon. And um, yes, it's not very often uh, that I get to talk about my work to engineers and people in the high tech or in the tech technology world, as I was just saying that I am a total ignoramus 
of trying to even handle my Instagram is sort of like a, a big pain for me. And I give it to a friend and said, go put it on. I can, I've managed with Facebook and WhatsApp, but that's what I can go up to. So, so yeah, so I'll briefly uh, give you a background of my training. And uh, I'm a trained Kathak and a Kathakali dancer. I started at the age of six, when most of you were still not on this planet, because uh, I'm 71 now. And, um, and I was very blessed uh, to have parents uh, to see the talent that I had. And I, I grew up in Calcutta and Jamshedpur. And most of my schooling and dance was all in Jamshedpur, which is again, as you all know, it's a steel city town. You know, so again, uh, people were not sort of, there was a pocket of people who were a little open, otherwise saying, even some of my parents' friends would say, why are you sending your son to study dance? You know, and yes. But my parents, I was very blessed, were quite adamant. They did make me stop when I finished high school. And um, I wanted to continue with dance. And I recall my father said, boys from good families don't take stage as a career. but." When I did return, he was very, very supportive of supporting my sort of passion to make it a career. So when I was in college, uh, I did continue with my Kathak and in college whenever there would be a, 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 an annual thing, chalo chalo, asat ko bolao ek nach kar lega, you know. Uh, so there was one little item number there from me. And at that time, I noticed in the other performing arts, whether it was visual art, music, theater, there was innovation happening. You know, at that time, in the late 68, uh, Ravi Shankar had really become big with the Beatles. And uh, so, so music had already uh, you know, started doing a crossover with musicians. Um, visual art, theater also there was, but nothing in dance. And I happened to see an American dance company come, and I was really taken aback with the way, because generally in, in those days, uh, the Indian classical dance uh, is basically a solo. Like if you see all the, even today, the top dancers, whether it's Bharatnatyam, Kuchipudi, Kathak, it's basically a solo performance. Then you have a sort of now ensemble work within those particular different styles, but you will still have a leader like if you see Malavika Sarukai, you know, uh, like she's just done a, a work on the loom, on the sari, you know, and she's brought in a group of dance, Bharatnatyam dancers. Or uh, you look at um, Aditi Mangaldas, who is a Kathak dancer, but again, she's got a whole ensemble of Kathak dancers uh, who are sort of working with her. You look at Kuchipudi, you know, so each one of these Odissi, you know, they have their stars and then they have their, so, so for me to see a, a dance company with bodies which had no inhibitions in working and interacting with each other, because again, like, you know, we Indians, uh, I mean, I think, I think times have changed now, but in the earlier days, like, to touch another person was also a, a being uncomfortable. I recall, I don't know if, how many of you know of Mohan Agashe, uh, a theater director, and uh, I was doing a workshop with the Marathi actors, and I asked um, the actors to touch each other, and this is why you sort of torturing us, you know, this feel of touch, you know, which in dance, you know, it's, you have to be totally comfortable because you are dancing, you are, and in contemporary dance, you are interacting uh, with the body, you know. So, uh, 
So that was also very interesting for me. Uh, welcome, latecomers, welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so, um, so when I saw them, I was really taken aback, and I said, okay. So I was about to finish my BCom, did my economics, you know. And, uh, and one thing very nice about my parents was that if you took the initiative, and if you presented it to them, they would weigh the pros and cons, and they would inva and invariably, I do not recall of any time, yeah, the only time once they said, you know, when I was studying Indian classical dance, I wanted to study the piano. And my father said, no, if you're going to study Indian classical dance, you study an Indian classical instrument. Why do you want to study the piano? Which was totally the opposite. So there they said, no, we're willing to send you to study whatever you want. But I, I was more interested in the piano, so that was the only time. Now, in, in the 60s, um, you know, it wasn't easy for an Indian just to, even if you had a passport, you just get your visa, go on an airplane and go. You needed permission from the Reserve Bank. And they sort of, and the foreign exchange you would get would be $8, you know, as a tourist. So, uh, I had a school friend who had just come back hitchhiking, and I, I've always been out of the box. I've always been adventurous in whatever I wanted to do, uh, a path breaker, daredevil, whatever you want to call me. So he, I, he told me how he left. And in those days, you know, if you could leave the country on a cargo boat with goats and sheep and vegetables, which were being taken to the Gulf, for there you did not require a P form. But if you went on the ship in the cabin class, you required permission. But if you traveled with the goats and sheep, you were okay, jao, you know. So uh, I managed to get, uh, again, I put it uh, to my parents. I said, this is what I'd like to do. And, um, and then I also uh, slipped in that I would like, from London, I would like to go to study modern dance. And I had managed through a friend, got admission to the Martha Graham Dance School. Martha Graham is one of the pioneers of American modern dance. So, and I said, you know, I have a scholarship, which was totally untrue. And um, so they said, okay, if that's what you want. So, so I left, and uh, the only thing is, I finished my exams on the 1st of May, my BCom, and the last boat was sailing out on the 23rd of May uh, before the monsoons began. So when the monsoons began, the sailings were not as frequent as they were before. So the American consulate people said, okay, if your papers are in order, you will get it. So on that, and uh, my papers, I was waiting for some, didn't come. Never mind. So I sailed out and arrived in uh, Iran, in the port of Khurram Shire. Uh, the first night I slept uh, in a Gurudwara, because that's what, so I followed my friend's tips, what he had done, but then it changed as it went on. So I started off in, 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 uh, from Khurram Shire, I came up to Tehran, and there there was a very famous um, Iranian pop singer, but who had started learning the sitar. And he met me at a party and we started talking and he says, would you like to come on my show? And so I was like my first television show and my first $50, that was my payment. And I was very excited. So I said, okay, fine. Um, I got that, I finished what I had to and I gave myself two and a half months. And in the two and a half months, I went through Turkey, Greece, Italy, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, France, Belgium, back into France, and then taking the ferry onto Dover and into London. So in the two and a half months, I sort of traveled all thanks to my thumb. Uh, I sort of saw the places, and, and in some places I was able to convince 
So as soon as I would arrive, I would try to go to a local television station and sell myself. Would you be an Indian classical dancer hitchhiking? Oh, because yeah, because there were very, very few Indians who really hitchhiked uh, in those days. And even now, I mean, now hitchhiking has really stopped because of the, the incidents where murders have taken place, uh, people getting robbed. So hitchhiking is not as popular as it was in the 60s. So uh, I came to London and uh, I was waiting for my papers to come. It arrived. I went to the US Embassy but they gave me the runaround for six months. And in those days, there was no fax. Then, you know, our telephones were like, you booked a phone through, and then you would, the first half minute, one minute would go, hello, hello, can you hear me, can you hear me? You know, and then the other, yes, yes, we can. And by then, say, three minutes are over, do you want to continue? So that way, so to cut a long story short, so I knew that I wasn't going to get um, my visa, so I said, well, I had no plans to return. And in that, me, in that six months that I was there, uh, there happened to be a, a modern dance comp uh, school which was teaching the Martha Graham technique to which I was planning to go. And in the three months that I went, and again, it, I did a barter, I said, okay, I will teach Kathak if I can take classes. And that's how I was able to sort of start initial studying. And I realized that the Graham technique was not meant for me. So I said, okay, fine. So what next? I didn't want to go back. So I said, okay, let me now continue to travel, and which I did for the next seven and a half years, and that I sort of covered 32 countries on all the five continents. I did come home briefly. Uh, uh, when I was in Thailand, but because by the time I went, I flew into Montreal, and in those days, again, being Commonwealth, Canada didn't require a visa, you got visa on arrival. But after that, I had to get visas for each and every country that I visited, but again, it wasn't so bad in those days. You one got what got the visas. So again, f if you've been to Canada, so right from Montreal, I hitched through Ottawa, Toronto, you know, uh, Hamilton, London, Thunder Bay, Edmonton, and finally into Vancouver. So in places like Montreal, London, there was a large sort of Indian students. Uh, so what my modus operandi was get to the university and try to say, look, I'm an Indian dancer, would you like me, would you like to present my work? And slowly, slowly, I had started doing a little bit of my own sort of creation, because having studied a little bit um, already in London, and um, so that's how my initial sort of journey began. So I really do a fast, fast forward. So in the eight years that I traveled, you know, I lived in countries like Japan. I spent a year because I was really fascinated. I spent a full year in South America, Brazil being the longest six months. And the reason, again, I went to Brazil first, the carnival was on and sort of attended the carnival and then continued in. And then again, all my travels was in a chronological order. If I, if I were to show you the map, so even like when I came to South from Brazil, one went to Argentina, then went on to Chile, then you came on to Peru, then you came into Colombia. So it was all in sort of uh, an order. One, the only time, one crazy summer when I did manage to get my visa for the US, when I'd come back home for my sister's wedding, in one summer in New York, and a friend of mine said, why don't we go to Kenya? As if it was just around the corner. So I said, okay, fine, let's do it. You know, so from New York, we flew to London, and from London, we came to Nairobi. And in those days, there used to be charter flights. It wasn't those cheap airlines that you see of Ryanair and whatever else you have today. So we went, and that was the only time I, I did a, a crazy thing. And yeah, and what was very interesting was, you know, my passport was I had to be renewed and I went to the uh, Indian Embassy and uh, I told uh, the guy, I said, you know, I want to change my profession because when I left India, it was a student. So I said, the profession kya hoga? Menagola dancer. 
डांस तो प्रोफेशन में नहीं है तो डांसर नहीं हो सकता आपको स्टूडेंट ही रहना पड़ेगा so well okay so once when i came back from uh, from nairobi to london and there was this british immigration officer says oh you seem to travel a great deal mr debu for a student so i said well i don't think you've come across very many jet set indian students you didn't like it will you step aside or shall we open your bags you know and in that time i had a lot of visas of you know cambodia vietnam all the opium you know cocaine trail you know so so when he opened my bags and and he said what do you do i said i'm a dancer so there like you know he saw there was sort of i had you know when i was in london in 69 i had an opportunity of doing a fundraiser for the lepers of africa and india and that's when pink floyd uh, were also part of this performance and this was organized by winston churchill's granddaughter uh, who i had encountered and when she came to know says why don't you come and be and then and she the one she suggested that hey why don't you guys do, do you want to jam and that time their album metal had come out i don't know if how many of you are pink floyd fans so metal was their first album so that's how i really got my sort of five minutes of fame which still continues that i've done but it's basically it was just a five minute jam that we did okay um now it's time to show something because one can go on talking so what is contemporary dance you know i mean today you see a lot of kids and um, say well, what do you do i do contemporary dance i said okay uh, what have you studied contemporary i said you studied jack shit you know you haven't studied anything you know because all you just because you have a flexible body and you're watching uh, uh, so for me in my case because having a very solid indian classical dance foundation and and then having started studying um other dance forms but again being very very careful to see what form which is not which i didn't spend a lot of time what could my body could my body assimilate that particular movement and uh, so that's how slowly i started evolving and creating a signature of my work so i'm going to start this evening again by showing today as i mentioned earlier or we just mentioned that i'm 71 now you know and what is the body how does the body move and um so i'm just going to show you uh how today my body works uh, it's very minimal i mean i can still jump and i i can still go and do the little bit chain a chain a chain a chain you know i can still do that but i i did that for a particular period of time but as create as one is a crea creative person you your creative mind starts thinking and you want to create and you want to work something new so right now i'm just showing you basically um it's abstract but you just see how today uh, or how this body moves um the music is um dhrupad i don't know how many of you are indian classical music uh, connoisseurs or lovers so dhrupad is from the north india and in my creative work i have a very eclectic selection and choice of music but dhrupad was the only sort of music which really moved and spoke to me to interpret it and i've just uh, after a very long period of time just a few days ago uh, i premiered a new work of mine in bombay with rudravina bahaudin dagar again coming from the uh, dagar family and playing in the dhrupad style so i created a full length work so we're having um, going to have an italian singer amelia cuni who has studied uh, for a very long period of time and it's her soundtrack which i'm going to be using in my performance or in my demonstration 
and don't get worried, I won't fall off. You know, this is my little stage. Again, to say that how in a small space, you know, can you work? Because all these, because today when you see dance, you see it on a, a big proscenium stage, basically. But even in a small area, you can work, uh, and that's also a, a speciality of my work, because as, as later, as uh, the evening progresses, you'll see another work which I'll do in another space which you don't even can imagine. We'll do a little sort of quiz as to where my next piece of performance will be.
myself moving. You have the lights and you know, you have a certain distance, but sort of, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Mike, Mike, Mike. Yeah. So, uh, so that's sort of uh, one sort of keeps uh, one's uh, flexibility going. Uh, one also walks and swims. So, these are the other things which keep me agile and limber, but I won't go into uh, a sort of be on a treadmill and go, you know, and, and look at some little inane show happening. You know, that doesn't work for me. I'd really have to be at it, you know, without any sort of distraction. So, um, After a number of years of being a solo performer, even when I came back in, in the initial stages, it was extremely difficult. It took me a year to find a platform in Bombay of, to present my work. And this was at the Prithvi Theatre. And it was thanks to my friend, the late Satyadev Dube and the late Jennifer Kendall, also known as Jennifer Kapoor, yeah, Shashi Kapoor's wife. They're the ones who really gave my first appearance uh, in Bombay, which was in 1978. So, as I said, this is like 40 years uh, that when I had my first performance. And uh, the Indian classical gurus would just dismiss my work and uh, one of the gurus, I won't mention his name, but still sort of said, Ek haat, ye kya aur ek pair aise hai kya isko dance bolte hain? Ha! Ha! And then a couple of years later, there was a documentary being made on him. And um, my signature uh, work today is, uh, I can s spin. Uh, which again comes from the Kathak, uh, having studied Kathak, you know, and I can spin f for 10 minutes without stopping. Now a Kathak dancer, when they spin, they spin for about a minute and that's it, you know. So the film was being done on this great guru and one of his dancers was spinning one minute at a time and I was spinning on the outer circle, continuing to spin. But later on, sort of, he said, okay, He's okay, you know, we can have him. Also, when I got my Sangeet Natak Academy Award, and that was sort of like, for the Indian classical gurus, sort of they said, oh, if the government is sort of acknowledging his work, then there might be something, you know, in, in his work. So that's how then they slowly started opening and looking at the work and Today, like, you know, um, or that's not today, but it's over nearly two decades that the Indian classical dance gurus have acknowledged, accepted, and yes, I um, am considered the pioneer of contemporary dance in India. Though Uday Shankar, really, uh, if you look at his, he is the one who started, but he basically worked with Indian classical different dance forms and brought it together and created his work. Whereas mine was sort of, even as I said, uh, work in abstraction, like I um, work in spaces, I will work with fabric, uh, 
I've done a piece called Insomnia, which basically uh, my set designer made a bed, but it was basically two sort of um, metal um, sort of things where one could sort of my ankles and my neck, and the rest of it was a total um, empty space, and that's where I had really had to control. Uh, in a way, somebody says, you're like a yogi now, you know, but that was not, but that was the control and that was the involvement and development. And the kind of themes that I used, um, there was another work which I used called Broken Pain, it was about a drug addict, or I worked with um, a piece, uh, for the first time I brought spoken word into my work, and this had just, after I'd come back from Germany, where I'd worked with this very, very renowned German choreographer by the name of Pina Bausch, who really revolutionized dance, uh, bringing theater in Europe and America. So when I came back, I uh, decided uh, it was, there was a dance festival. So I decided to work, uh, and there's a street called Mangalore Street in Bombay. And so I decided to show a day in the life of Joe Glaker, you know. Uh, and Manglo Street is a street in, uh, in Bombay. So basically, again, I sort of, uh, I really wanted to come on a scooter, but the, the theater in Bombay said, no, no, you can't, you can't bring scooter on stage. This, uh, I'm talking about the 80s. And so I came on a cycle. And I had my friend uh, Sunil Shanbagh, the very well-known theatre director. Some of you may have heard of his name again if you're into theatre. Also seen very often at uh, Ranga Shankara at, uh, and other places in Bangalore. So he wrote a dialogue for me. So, so as re required many dumb characters and no dancer really would come, so I had another friend make me props on stage. So we had a, a prop of a spanner and a hubcap. We had a prop of an umbrella. We had a prop of an old coat. Then we had a prop of a chair. So all these props signified a certain story. That's why I was not able to sleep. Um, so in, uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, uh, my apologies. I've mixed two works together. That was insomnia. So yeah, so Manglo Street. So here, okay. So I come cycling on stage and the cycle breaks down. And he says, Cycle wale sahab, hum aapki cycle wapas laye hain. Ek din bhi aapke bina se cheek se nahi chalti. What man, sir? Tum aise kai ko bolta hai? Tum tumhara cycle, humara cycle ko bolta hai? Ye Indian maal sal achha nahi hai. Kya Indian maal achha nahi hai? Tum kaam cheek se nahi kate ho? Shaam tak meri gaadi chahiye. Life may kuch panna ho, to sala film star bano. Kal raat ko gang ke saath dawn dekha. You know? Oh, Amitabh Bachchan kya dance karta hai? So whenever I revived it, I brought in an, to make it fresh, bring in whatever the new film, like we'd say, let's say, what is the, Ranveer Singh kya dance kya, you know? You know? In uh, Baji Rao Mastani, you know? So that would have been the track. So, so I become, you know, man who don, man who don, 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 tan, 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 tan. And then, okay, it freezes. Back, Joe Glicker is sitting in the office and says, Raju, chai lao. Now all the UDP people, and come, 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 come. Okay, they're feeling shy. So, uh, so the UDP guy uh, sort of, so I come in, so I have a mask which has little teacups and some Carnatic music is being played and then, uh, then the music fades out and then again, there's a gist of the conversation is, uh, Raju says, Cigarette peene ke liye paisa hai, chai peene ke liye paisa nahi, no mal pani, no chai pani. So again, so then this Carnatic music happens and then, then all of a sudden that scene finishes and um, Arundhati here. But darling, 
At that time, Shankar was alive. Okay. But darling, I don't like modern dance. Um, okay, it should have been reversed. Shankar saying, Shankar, yeah. You know, and, but Arundhati, I don't like modern dance. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll see you at, the modern, I'll see you at uh, Chodaya. So then you go into seeing a modern dance happening. And then the dance finishes. Um, and before it says, um, Jogarika says, uh, Ramu, call Miss Rita up and tell her we won't go to the movies tonight and finish the report and bring it to my home. So then the modern dance gets over and then, Ao, ao, jugi Pan kaugi. Gana sunogi. Nach de kogi. Oh, Sultana Bai. <laughs> Tera naach kamal hai, tera gana dhamal hai, sab ho jai. So then I had this song, there was a song called Sultana, Sultana, Mera naam hai Sultana, Main pariyo ki rani, Main julfu ki rani. So I had this long plait with this thing, and so I do a little mujra, and then sort of again the music stops. Eh hey, Sultana bhai, there was a call. Sali Lundi, Pesaleke Chali Gai, Darwaza Nai Kholwe. Then you see Joglika cycling back and that's how Manglo Street was. So there again it was a big controversy happened that I played Bollywood song in the Tata Theatre. And two days later I was summoned to Bombay House by the trustees and says, how could you play Bollywood song in our sacrosanctum theatre? You know, so these are like, I could narrate a lot of stories of the kind of uh, objections, the kind of sort of uh, people not being open to the kind of work I've done. So, okay, so, um, so when I started wanting to work with other dancers, the dancers, even though they wanted, could not come forward because they were very afraid that their gurus would rusticate them. So I started working with other performing art disciplines, like I worked with puppets and uh, I created a work called Thanatomorphia, The Many Faces of Death. Death is a dancer, death is a lover, death is a liberator, death is celebration. And each episode was again based on Yama, you know. So, uh, so I worked with uh, Master Puppeteer Dadi Padamji, who made these puppets and worked with the, with the puppets. So then as time went on, I started working um, with, up in Manipur, and I've been working now in Manipur for the last 16 years. I started with the martial art practitioners and later on came to working with uh, the drummers of Manipur, which are still very much a part of my work. Okay, so now, let's see, where is the next dance going to be? Where do you think I'm going to do, perform for you? Any ideas? Select a space, it's in this space. What did you say? I've done table, how boring. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. Anything else? Chair, Chair. okay. Anything else? Ha <laughs> ha, no, nobody's got it. Okay. Uh, so, if you would, okay, I think you can all turn your heads around, or if you would like to take, turn your chairs around, you know. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. Mike Legia? Legia, no? So there. 
so there we were talking about space again now. Uh, so this is another kind of space where one could work. Now, unfortunately, this glass is not transparent, it's opaque. So, but had it been, uh, I would have worked about, we'll, we'll still use the space and you'll get to see. So once I've, just to give it a little, years ago I was um, dancing in Rishikesh on the banks of River Ganga and, um, and a stage was on, on the uh, floating stage and I was dancing there. And I don't know if you've heard of Channu Maharajji. Channu Maharajji is a very big singer, an Indian singer. And uh, he met me the next day at the airport. He says, Nachanya? Huh? You know what Nachanya is? No, like a da dancer, but like, it's like a Nachanya, like, yeah, you are like a, a notch girl. You know, it says, Agar tu pani me gir jata, ta mera program to chop at ho jata. Because again, I was dancing like here, and one step when I would have gone, I would have been in the river. So, so yeah, so check it out. Music.
Yeah, it, can, it is frustrating for me also that I want to get into it, but I have a time bound because you all have to get home to girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, wives, children, or finish an assignment. So, how are we doing for time? Okay, five, okay. Um, another half an hour? Yes? Okay. Entertaining? Okay. So even high art can be appreciated. So next time when somebody says, let's go to a contemporary dance, he says, okay, let's go. But I can assure you, it'll be very different. It won't be what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, because each, each choreographer has his or her own signature to... Because uh, today, the contemporary dancer, with no offense meant, it's, it's their creativity, but it'll be... something on those lines. Uh, so today, as I said, a lot of these dancers, you know, don't, okay, they have their own concept and which is very fine, but there's very, very few have real dance movement. Today, it's accepted in contemporary dance. It's more theater now than dance, you know, and they'll sort of like, they'll also be sitting and going, whatever. Whatever, else, never mind. So, uh, okay. Um, besides sort of working, uh, I've had a lot of wonderful uh, platforms internationally also, working with some great uh, musicians, music composers, uh, uh, theater people. Recently I did Hamlet in Korea with the Korean theater director, and I played Hamlet's father, the ghost, and I also played head of the clowns. So, but there was also, it wasn't a straight Shakespeare adaptation, uh, interpretation. Uh, Hyung Tech Lim, who is the theater director, really sort of uh, did it sort of like a musical. So, uh, so while in my early days when I wanted to work with dancers and nobody really wanted. So I would go to Calcutta very often to do my solo work and uh, I knew of a theater director, Zareen Chaudhary, who worked with deaf young actors. And uh, so I suggested it one year to her. I said, you know, why don't I uh, work uh, with your kids, give them a workshop so she said, okay, again, I n had no training in how to work with the deaf. So she said, okay, let's go for it. So the first year I did a three-day workshop, went away. Second year, again, I came and did another workshop. And on the third year, she writes to me and says, uh, do you have three weeks uh, at a stretch where you can come and work with the actors? Because the actors are very keen in working and developing. So it so happened that one of my tours of Europe got canceled last minute. So I said, yeah, okay, fine. So after having spent three weeks with them and again, making them aware of space, touch and all that. So we came up with a sort of a demonstration. And um, so then I said, well, and she also said, well, there's a possibility of doing a performance with them. So the one half of the performance was uh, she took Vikram Seth's beastly tales and she did a sort of like a mime thing and the other half was dance and sort of I worked with them. So uh, that success really began um, my journey with this particular group and I, I worked with them for 14 years. Uh, creating and taking them also to the U.S. twice 
to Gallaudet University, which is the world's largest university for the deaf. So while I was sort of working with them on one of my performance tours uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, one of my cousin's uh, brother-in-law, who's deaf, was a school teacher, uh, and sort of he introduced me to the uh, head of the performing arts, and we got it started talking and, and I began a relationship with Gallaudet University for seven years. So in the course of that seven years, I was able to take twice my group uh, to sort of interact, to have a very intensive summer workshop, which really was a great learning because the kind of facilities which the deaf have overseas, we do not have uh, in India even today. And then from there I started working with another deaf group uh, in Chennai called the Clark School for the Deaf. And with them I created a full 60 minutes work. And I called it Contraposition based on the Navrasas. And again the reason I could do a 60 minute work because these young deaf girls already had a Bharatnatyam vocabulary in them. And so with them again, uh, with that, uh, within a matter of two years, uh, we did 75 performances nationally and internationally. Like we opened the deaf, uh, 25th Deaf Olympics in Melbourne. And the last work we did was when the late President Abdul Kalam invited my work to the Rashtrapati Bhavan. So, so the, that was sort of like really something. Uh, uh, my CSR had already begun in 1988-89. And, and it's been really uh, a very, very uh, meaningful and really using myself as a catalyst. Because there's so much talent around, but unfortunately there's no real person to spot it and work with them and put them on stage. You know, that also is a whole different machinery, which is all me. I'm a one-man show complete even today. You know, my own manager, my own press agent, my own sort of, uh, and then in the end, being the star, right? Well, not the star, the artist, you know. So, um, so at one point, uh, I was always dependent on corporates, again, who are by and large not very generous as they should be. And one of the corporates who was supporting my deaf work, I went to them and I said, um, I uh, would like to propose a new deaf work. So this lady from um, HR says, oh, but darling, we're not into deaf, we're into street children. It's like, okay, this year now, we're, the new commodity we want is street children, you know, and that tone. There's no sort of, says no, Asad, we know we've decided, you've worked a lot with the deaf, we're looking at, but that, her way of tone was talking, drop the deaf, raise the street children. That's the new marketing with this thing. So it so happened that the Salam Balak trustees were after me for a very long time. And so it just happened that, okay, fine. So I could propose to them, and there began uh, my work with the Salam Balak Trust of Delhi, with the street children. So I've done a little documentary, so I'm going to show you a part of uh, that. And this was way back in 2008, that this uh, documentary. And then again, you know, when the corporates give you the money, then they say, okay, we want to see, like, you know, it's like within uh, the... Fund was supposed to be for a year, but by the time the funds came, it was like five months. And within five months, I had to whip up a production to say, okay, then to tell their bosses, look, the money is well spent and here's the production. So, so here, let's have a look. Well, shall we show the video? Breaking boundaries. How about you? Breaking boundary yeah, like a,
to Rajasta there again. You spoke to Neeraj just now? We had spoken before he left and he had said yes we want to do a, a one page uh, which will be distributed. Yeah, but as I said, it, it, it won't come out from my expense. I told Sanjoy very clearly because my budget is now, uh, you know, gone beyond. Uh, now, now Sanjoy is only coming back on the 10th. We should start get cracking on it uh, by tomorrow. Did you find out I'd asked you whether these people have a CD player? I have to see whether that's possible, whether they can carry it or not, you know. I mean, they can carry it, I'll just double check also. I'm, I'm just uh, arriving there in a matter of uh, minutes. Okay. तीन चार साल पहले हमारा एक शो हुआ था एविडेट में वहाँ पे सर को मैंने पहली बार देखा था वहाँ पे एज ए चीफ गेस्ट आए थे वो उसके बाद जब यहाँ पे आए तो उन्होंने दिखाओ आप क्या कर रहे हो एक ड्रीम करके एक थीम पे एक डांस था वो किया था उसके बाद सर ने बताया देखो मेरा डांस इससे अलग होगा तो सर ने थोड़ी अपनी झलक दिखाई थी तब से भी चल रहा है my work was all about and I said this is the way uh, we will be taking our work forward uh, I will first of all make you aware of your body of the movements you are able to or capable of and then also making them aware of each other you know uh, when you're working you're just not into yourself but you have to be aware of your co-dancer you got to be aware of the space for me spaces are very very important and uh, and I wanted to make, have, give them a little bit of an experience of uh, how in a limited space or how in a controlled space you can perform. Okay, we get off the line. Keeping in mind uh, the uh, rehearsal area, because that's where I'm rehearsing in uh, one of the uh, rooms uh, of the Apnagar. And, uh, so there were benches there, so I said, okay, let me um, use these benches uh, and uh, make them the prime focus uh, of the space that they would be interacting with. First of all, there was confusion. They were sitting there and they slowly had to sort of go all the way back and then pump it you dance heck, yeah? I said, hey, we dance heck.
ये 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 करो ये ये तीन लोग एक टाइम पे आ रहे हैं दूसरे तीन टाइम पे इस जा रहे हैं चलो बिगनिंग हमारा जो एक महीना था शुरुआती वो तो बहुत बुरा रहा क्योंकि बैठ नहीं पाते थे अभी हम लोग तीन चार मिनट कंटिन्यू ऐसे बैठ सकते थे लेकिन तभी ऊपर नीचे होते थे कि दर्द हो रहा है उठ जाओ अब नहीं हो पाएगा और मानसिक रूप से तो हम लोग पूरा थक जाते ही थे शारीरिक रूप से भी टाइडनेस बहुत अजीब सा फील होता था बॉलीवुड के लिए हमको सिर्फ काउंट्स और म्यूज़िक को फील करना पड़ता है पर सर के लिए हमें पहले तो म्यूज़िक को समझना ज़रूरी है उसके बाद म्यूज़िक के बाद हमें सर का स्टेप समझना ज़रूरी है और जब वो दोनों चीज़ समझ आएगा तब जाके हमारे शरीर की एनर्जी हमारा लगन सब कुछ उसमें दिखाना पड़ता है तब जाके हम एक स्टेप को क्लियर कर पाते हैं नहीं तो फिर नहीं होता क्लियर बिल्कुल नहीं होता और दूसरा दूसरा बात कौन सा है एक दो सर का जो स्टेप है ना जो कि बहुत ज़्यादा पावरफुल है दिखने में लगता नहीं है कि उतना ज़्यादा पावरफुल बट जब फील करो एक्सप्रेशन के साथ वो चीज़ स्टेप्स करते हैं ना तो बहुत ज़्यादा पावरफुल है जैसे कि ये ही है ये है दिखने में लगता है कि बहुत सिंपल है बट बहुत पावरफुल है जब हम हाथ ऐसे करते हैं तो जब रात को जाते हैं हम लोग सोने उने के लिए घर पे आते हैं तो मेरा तो ये है खास कर ये ये चीज़ें बहुत दर्द होता है यहाँ से पावर लगती है यहाँ से खोलना निकालना ये सब चीज़ें करना सब हाथ ऐसे लगता है अकड़ी जकड़ गई है ओके स्टॉप थैंक यू स्टॉप 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 ओके सो आफ्टर दिस वर्क विद दैम इन दिस वर्क आई हैड सिक्सटीन डांसर्स फोर गर्ल्स एंड ट्वेल्व बॉयज एंड सो वेन एवर आई क्रिएट अ वर्क विद एनी ऑफ माई क्रिएशन दे ओल्ड टेन टू बी शो केस्ड बोथ नेशनली एंड इंटरनेशनली एंड आफ्टर this work i selected eight young men because at that point of time the nation was celebrating rabindranath tagore's 150th anniversary and i'd done earlier in the 80s the indian express had asked me to create a work on tagore's poems and songs and i'd done a, a solo work called interpreting tagore and i decided to revisit that work it's not very often that i revisit a work which i have choreographed and uh, and the work permitted that i would require dancers to really show another aspect of my choreography but with the same theme so with them i sort of uh, created interpreting tagore and uh, and before we close down um, i i took them to Mexico uh, for a very prestigious festival and then we went on to Colombia Spain Andorra and um, so when i was bringing them out for the first time and uh, and one thing i've always been dependent and i've been very fortunate that the the hospitality has always been sponsored by whether it's the ITC or whether it's the Oberoi or the Taj depending on uh, who i knew at that in that particular property and how open they were so when they were coming to bombay for the first time and uh, the itc the grand central um, the manager was very open and uh, so the trustee called me and says why are you exposing these children to a a five star lifestyle i said okay um, you know i mean i found their their attitude one point here saying but i just found it very disturbing i said okay fine i do you have 2 lakhs to give me because that's what's going to cost me to house 16 of these kids at the ymca for 10 days do you have that no so i said when they are getting an opportunity of staying 
Yes, it is like from rags to riches, like, you know, uh, the kind of uh, reaction these young kids had because never had they in their wildest dream of going and entering. You know, at times they would be stopped and then I really had to tell the security, pay attention and these kids are going to be coming in and out and I do not want to come back again to say that you're going to stop them. They're part of my team. So again, all these kids were all very excited. There was one of my kids, you know, whenever we went into this, the first thing he would go, he'd fill up the hot water tub and sink into it and lie into it. And the guys would be knocking, are you like, you know, or there would be another one, they would be jumping on the uh, sort of, uh, the bowl full of springs, you know. So there was all sorts of lovely experiences. Like when I took them for the first time, the guys again picked up puri bhaji. I said, Puri bhaji to roch khate ho na. Ab dekho ye omelette hai. Juice kyun? Fresh juice hai. So in a way it was very nice sort of again to train them, to give them uh, another aspect of life and experience. And, and uh, in the years that have come, you know, I'm, maybe none of you have stayed in so many hotels as they have all across the country, you know. You know, and, and I recall once um, we were doing a show and it was at the Taj Lands West End and uh, again some of um, my boys, I had got them upgraded and so this one boy comes and says, Sarji, Sarji, potty seat is very warm. You know, because you know, in, uh, if I don't know if you've experienced, like in Japan and all, the commode seats are all heated, and then you press different buttons, and they would say, ooh, like pani chipka and all that. So then they, would, they called up even those people who were not, chalo chalo, aao betho, dekho, kya maza okay. So there were so many incidents like that. So, um, so yeah, so, um, after about five, six, seven years, I do reach a saturation point in working uh, with the groups that I'm working because again, my own, but at the same time, I used, even though when I'm working with them, my own solo creativity or collaborations overseas that continued and still continues, you know, because uh, uh, that hasn't stopped. So, um, and, um, some of them, I, uh, and a lot of them have today uh, chosen to be professionals and do make a living. Uh, quite a few of them uh, work with Anurupa Roy, uh, a puppeteer, uh, Dadi Padamji, or they um, also now have started going to schools and giving classes in schools. And, um, and from time to time, I call upon them. I just recently called upon a few of them. I was asked by the Wildlife Trust of India to create a work uh, on Save the Elephant. So I selected a few of them and sort of uh, choreographed. And then at one point they said, Sarji, why don't we do another new work with us? I said, look, kids, because my work is not sort of in a flow. It sort of it's seasonal and they're getting to work on a regular basis. And I said, if I'm coming, I need 24 seven of your time. I can't be saying, nay, may I, I'll come only on this time and that time. I said, I'm not going to dance to your tunes. If you want to work, you got to dance on my tunes. So if I uh, do uh, decide to work, I, I would pick up on some of the new, young new ones who have talent and all. So at this point, I'm going to throw open for any questions before we close uh, this afternoon's tete-a-tete. -tete. Yes. Uh, I want to know about your hairstyle. So how <laughs> are you having this? That's, that's a question I want to ask. <laughs> okay, the question was about my hairstyle. Okay. Um, you know, um, Years and years and years ago, I'm talking about 35 years ago, that's how old I've been wearing. My hair has been scaped, hairscape. You know, it's like a little lawn which is mowed from time to time. I had a young uh, friend who used to style my hair and, um, and he subsequently passed away. And I discovered another young uh, 
hairdresser by the name of Ravina D'Souza. So she sort of, as I said, um, creates the hair salon and has become a signature to me. So like people say in a crowd, we recognized you because you have all those cross and knots or zigs and zags, whatever, depending on what, what she has created for me. And, um, and while I'm away overseas, as sometimes it's for extended period of time, that's when the hair grows and the lines disappear, and then she's able to give me another new look to the, uh, to the, the look of the season. You know, how you see the fashion people say, the winter season, the spring season, so that's my sort of new hairstyle for that particular season. So you said the Drupad was the music which has moved you and when you stood there the first thing you have told is to play the music and then you started the dance. Uh, then why this making deaf guys dance? How did they feel? I mean without music. Right. Okay. So uh, it's not only the deaf, even like my, uh, the martial artists or the drummers of Manipur, whoever will work with me because of the fact that my work is so minimal and uh, so I all made them learn to count, and everybody had to count. And, and the, not the trick, the important thing is that they all had to be synchronized. When I worked with the deaf, I made it very clear, there's no room for mistake, because I do not want the audience sitting and watching you, and you're, one of you is out of sync, and they'll say, Sunnei Saktana, I said, I don't want that, because it's, I, when I worked with them, it was not out of pity or anything, because I saw here is a group of kids who are talented and can be mold. So the count is on the eights, which begins with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the rhythm which was taught and the music was also s selected which gave me that count of that slow count of eight, which then they could all. So when you see them, and like, especially with when the Chennai girls, when they did a 60 minute performance, and I based it on the rasas. So uh, the bhakti rasa was in the eight, the raja was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, one. So that's how they learned, because they could. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So if you get that count, and if everybody's counting at the same time, then it becomes, then you, then you slowly start cleaning up the movement, so as long as they've got that, you know, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, it would line up with eight, but in a different time, so each sort of segment had a different count to it, so that's how uh, one, even with my drummers, you know, because the drummers had there, and I removed the drums away from them, and they said, I said, okay, fine, just imagine that this is your drum. You know, and we are going to move. So you are moving with your drums. So slowly, slowly, they started getting confident and did not think that, oh, this is my... So it became an, a natural kind of movement for them. And again, the music, they had to sort of listen to it. They had to pick up... Uh, they made their own cues because there were, there were cues in the music itself, a change of music, so that they knew that, okay, fine. Now we have to change. So the process of creating a work is always, always very, very exciting. I mean, sure, the end product also, you say, well, after the blood, sweat, and tears, and is that what I've created? Okay, Doesn't, looks okay, you know, could be better. You know, so that is sort of uh, how one has been training and working. Even with um, my street children, that's how they, like as Avinash said, like, you know, there was this position where they had to be like this. and then slowly
Because before they came, they were, all they were doing was Bollywood dance, you know. So, da 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 You know, so that's what happened. So, and that all went out of the air. Okay, next question. So, you had any conversation with the Queen? Uh, how did you feel meeting the Queen? I'm sorry, the, the Queen. Oh. Uh, I heard you have been to the Queen, and okay. <laughs> the papers wrote something. But how do you know about the Queen? The okay, fine. Like? Okay, fine. So in 2017, um, India and the UK were celebrating 70 years of diplomatic uh, sort of relationships and also like India had gained independence. So um, the British Council India uh, and the UK suggested to the Buckingham Palace that uh, if Her Majesty would throw a, a reception where uh, people uh, were connected with in the arts um, not just dance there was music there was film there were professors so Indians who had excelled in their field and also uh, so 250 were the total which were in that so they sort of split 125 in England there are Indians who expats who lived and grown up there and British people who have a sort of a relationship with India and and similarly uh, you know there was also uh, film critics you know and, and one film critic uh, which some of you might rec well the IFA might recognize stars! I don't know whether you know who I'm talking about but you know so um, so then a list was drawn up and um, and then that's how uh, my sort of penny fell and I was one of the uh, people invited and it was quite a, a elegant and uh, evening where not only Her Majesty the Queen but there was Prince Philip and there was Kate and William and there was um, Edward, Prince Edward and there was Eugenie, the daughter of Prince Andrew, the Duke of Kent. So there was a whole bunch of um, uh, people. So after we were presented and then the Queen went around and we all met. So one of the, uh, it was very interesting, one of the ladies, very proper, and, and she says, Oh, I love your hairstyle. You know, and she says, You know, I'm one of the Queen's lady in waiting. Oh, I said, Good evening. But I'm the younger one. I've been only at her service for 35 years. You know, there are others who've been with her for 50 years, you know. So, yeah, just, so yeah, these events like um, do bring in a lot of fun and surprises, you know. Ask more? Can I ask more? Uh, no, I think you asked. No, no, if anybody else wants to ask. Yes. Praise Jai. Well, if nobody, he can ask. You can give it back to him. He is the only bold one. The rest of you are quiet. See, these are the days where even theatre, you know, P to draw people into theatre is a tough job. I mean, uh, so now it's a contemporary or the dance which I don't see very few people. The audience is limited audience yeah. now. So there are not a lot of buyers. So how do you keep that? I mean, this is an art you love and there are no takers for it. So how do you keep up, uh, you know, with that? I mean, yeah, it, it, what it, makes you go on? And well, it's my passion. It's, you know, uh, I'm sort of, uh, it's still like uh, there are a few takers. The takers are... Um, more than what it was when I started um, my journey w way back in 1978 where I had 70 people uh, in the audience and um, and recently uh, when I performed I had a thousand people seating in the auditorium so through the years you know there and what is very nice is that, that today a lot of younger generation people are also coming to see you know there are people who've been watching my work you know and are also getting to be geriatrics like me but you know uh, but so there are sort of younger ones who do come but yes it is still um, a lonely road and like somebody say oh you've been honored and all that I said yeah fine that's good but it still doesn't uh, bring you know so yeah one still has to keep at it and uh, when young people come and or, or they say like my contemporary dancer, I said, okay, and they'll do their little show, which they do it with earnest, but I tell them, what is your lifeline going to be? You know, 
I see the same thing what you're doing for two years. The third year, I don't know whether you'll have an audience to what you are, you know, because I said you need to study, you need to grow. And it is a lonely road, you know. Uh, India still is not very generous to the performing arts, you know. So one has to be mad like me and passionate and um, and like sometimes I would say, Mera number kab aega? And I still say, like in certain venues which I still would love to perform and I'm not getting a break. And I say, and I say, which I learned from my father, um, the going is delayed, not denied. And the other thing is, even failures when happen and still disappointments are many and I say, Whatever happens, happens for your good. If that project didn't come through, okay, something else comes up. And I say, well, okay, had I done that, this would not have come. So this is one way one psychs oneself up to sort of deal with life, you know. But the show must go on. So shall we have another little dance? Yeah. Ooh, okay.
I just asked them for two tables and voila, a special work for only for you. So a big hand to the gentleman here. whose vision is to make you young people get your minds out of that little screen or whatever you all do to be a little more open and make yourself aware of there are things besides what you do. Thank you. Should I even ask for this? There should be a standing, standing ovation, guys. <laughs> Lord of the bench. And at this point, you also need to give an applause to the IIFA, the Indian Foundation of the Arts. It's through their initiative that I'm here. Thank you. Okay, anybody doing a selfie has to give 50 rupees to the Asta David Dance Foundation. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, can I call you Shashi to come and uh, present a moment to you? You asked really insightful questions, and I'm really, really glad you did that. Yeah, I'm sure there's never going to be an end. <laughs> Guys. Well done. I'm sure many of you want to do that. Board on to a great man like this who just felt 17, all of 17. You know, when he said he wanted to dance on the tables, I was scared. And he said, shut up. I have danced on a wall that's 70 foot high in a fort. So I said, okay. And when he opened that window, my heart was in the mouth. Oh, oh, oh God, what's going to happen? We don't have an insurance on him. <laughs> Guys, one more round of applause. Please don't sit down for a while. I've lived a dream today. Actually, I saw this, uh, as I said, in India today, years back. I never expected, sir, that I would see you in person. Wonderful, sir. Thank you very much on behalf of Saskin for coming and delighting us. Thank you. Thank you. You can always invite me back. Sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. He wanted to go to China, actually. <laughs> okay, there you go. Selfie time, I know.